So you have to turn the power on and then you turn the key on. And once it's been charged, it has a red button and the red button you want to push, which resets the little odometer. And that's important because you don't want to go more than about 20 to 25 miles on a charge, not with these batteries. Someday maybe I'll be able to afford some better batteries, but right now these will only take me about 25 miles. Um, and so I know I've got close to a full charge here. It goes up to maybe about 81 when it's fully charged. And it doesn't make much noise. Uh, it's only costing 15 cents worth of electricity every two days or so. And that seems to me to be a lot better environmentally than driving a gas car. Uh, economically people, too. The e well, of gas economically money. and yeah. environmentally, right. The uh, people say, well, you know, that's a coal fired power plant or nuclear, by the way, but in my case, I can justify it two ways. One, I charge it at night, and all the electricity those power plants make, it just goes nowhere at night. It's just, they're burning and nothing to do with it. Uh, but the second is we pay a teeny little bit extra per kilowatt hour at our house to have electricity from uh, sustainable sources. So, And anyone can do that. You can do that. I, as far as I know, you can still enroll in that program. They just don't make it widely known. So I enrolled in it a long time ago, as did probably most of our neighbors. So we're trying, at least. But really, you should have uh, uh, better electricity sources than what we've got right now. Coal fire is just not a great idea. Um, and I've had people roll down their window, many, just more times than I can count. People roll down their window at the traffic light and say, that's a really cool car. And I say, it's 100% electric. And they go, it is. So I think most people don't even realize that it's electric. They, um, just, they just think it's really a funny little it. weird car, right? One of the first days we were riding around in it, I thought Rusty had been charging it, but um, it hadn't. And so I took off and took Brian to the doctor. Basically, it made it there, and that was it. So I just pulled up in the front at the doctor's office and plugged it in on their front porch and let it sit there for a couple hours, and then I made it back home with it. Um, and then another day... Uh, driving around near VCU and it ran out and fortunately a bunch of my students live there and so I was just able to knock on the door of a former student and say, can I plug my car in please? And they just laughed. They thought that was so funny. Hey Jim. And uh, so they let us plug it in for a while and charged it for about three hours and it got home okay and then charged it overnight. It takes a good nine or ten hours if you see it dry. And whoops. <laughs> Um, so, I actually they say you should suck it dry every once in a while, but I'm scared to. So I'm not sure how to do that because you don't true. have charging stations anywhere. It's you can true only... for electronics, I know. Yeah, like your cell phone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I need to go drive around the block for two hours now, so that I can drain it, so the the batteries won't have whatever that memory is. And I haven't been doing that lately so I guess I'm gonna have to do that sometime soon all right so I got it floored right now by the way <laughs> this is only do about 15 miles an hour up a steep hill like this but then you felt it kick just then a little bit that's the charger said well wait a minute it's not going as fast as it could so it's the controller tells it okay well you can put a little bit more electricity into it Wow they have a lawn service so then Jaws came out, the movie Jaws, and it came out <laughs> right before I went on a, on a snorkeling trip to learn how to snorkel and scuba dive, and I can't believe I still went. <laughs> um, but that just sort of cinched it for me that I thought what I wanted to be was some kind of oceanographer, work with, with ocean somehow. Um, and so that's what my degree is, actually, is oceanography, and we do all biological, physical, geological, chemical oceanography. And that sort of translates to what I do now in biology.
building looks different in the morning. You know, everybody says they say I'm dynamic or I'm energetic or kinetic, and I don't know. I just have all that energy in me, and I, it's just always there. Uh, yesterday, I was pretty much a slug because I'd stayed out too late the night before. Um, so, but I mean, on a typical day, I just need to be going. And I don't know, I, you know, maybe though, it's just because I always do that. And I guess if you got into the habit of not doing it, maybe you wouldn't have that much energy. But I just always have been doing my fingers like that. <laughs> and if I eat and take vitamins, it's even worse. And if I drink coffee, it's even worse than that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we uh, lived together from 84 to 88 and <laughs> bought houses and stuff like that together. And then uh, Rusty's friends were giving him a lot of pressure to uh, propose and get married. They said he was living in sin. I said, I don't care. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, we got married in 1988. Um, golly, that's a long time ago. That was before we even wanted kids. PCU is a great place, you know that? Um, when you go to other universities, there's a lot of, uh, I wouldn't say backstabbing, but a lot of competition at other universities. But I've been real lucky at UAB, it was a nice collegial place, and at VCU, uh, you know, I get emails from other professors that I hardly ever see because they're on another floor, but they'll see something in a journal or they'll see a, a request for proposals and they'll shoot it off to me. They want me to succeed. And so, of course, I do the same thing. If I see something I think relates to another professor in our department, or even in chemistry or whatever, I send it to them. So I want them to succeed. Uh, we work together a lot. There are just tons of collaborations going on in our department. Um, when we're in faculty meetings, it's all very diplomatic, and um, you know, decisions aren't made about us or for us. We make the decisions. Analysis, the very first line under the word pop, that's what it's going to call that population. So if I called that individual BA1, that's that population. Okay. Uh, so then you get to new population, you put a line that has nothing but the word pop, and then your second. The point of what she's teaching okay, us today comma, is that you take this data. It's all these different lengths of pieces of DNA that mean something. And she's teaching us how to format them, to put them into these programs. This is Excel. And you format them a certain way. 